I'm Sean, and this is the video that I didn't think I would have to make. I started to get into my car right here uh, to do another video with some air filters and some sciencey stuff. And then I made a discovery. I couldn't get in. So the window is down just a little bit. And that's what happens, or is supposed to happen, and did happen, when the battery went flat. Uh, the window would normally be tucked up in here, and voltage got to a certain point, came down, so the glass doesn't break when you go to open the door. So that happened correctly, uh, but I can't open the door. There's a specific order of operations when this happens. Uh, obviously, you're not gonna use anything electronic. So you have to go to step number one, which is the manual key, which is tucked up under here. You remove a panel, there's a key cylinder, and then the physical key uh, that is in your key fob, as shown here, uh, that just unclips from there. Uh, so that key goes in there and you're supposed to be able to turn it, which will manually open this door. The problem is it never works. Uh, before I did the soft close conversion on mine, I tried it and it's just, it's, it's extremely tough. Uh, it's really tight, it won't really turn unless you have absolutely no load on it, like from the locking mechanism. So basically it doesn't work. Uh, so what do you do there? Well, now we have to figure out how we can get power to the car to energize this, unless you can find a way to uh, get something down in this crack, grab the manual release uh, that you can't really see from my reflection here. The manual release down there, if you can grab it, you could open the door uh, and get into it, but we can't. I tried something with that. I couldn't really get in there. I didn't want to damage the interior trying to do it. So what is next in line? Well, we've got to get the front open. And what you may or may not know is there is a cable down here in the door. So if we can get the door open, there's a little spot you can pull it, it'll open the front. But we can't open the door. So how do we get to that cable? Well, that's what we're gonna go over today is uh, I actually did reroute mine to where it's supposed to be in the door jam, but we may have to kind of modify that on the fly. What we're gonna do. First step, jack up your car. Take the wheel off get access to the inner wheel arch, pull the cable to get the front lid open. First, some notable things I'll point out. Uh, the car's actually been sitting for about a week and a half, and this is the first time this has ever happened. I have left my car for three and four weeks without starting it. Um, between, I normally drive it all the time, uh, but between weather, vacation, you stack those on top of each other, might end up being three weeks. Very rare that happens, but it always started, no problem. Uh, when I hit a deer, uh, I was in a body shop for two months, still started. So this whole week and a half thing, no idea why it happened, freak thing. Uh, British car, they do weird electrical things periodically. This is just the weird electrical thing that has happened to me today. Now in regards to jacking up the car, if you've never done this before, uh, there's a spot in the front and there's a spot in the back and they're marked with a green sticker that mentioned they are a jack point. That's where you should be jacking it up. So you might note that I'm actually jacking it up from the back and not the front. And that's because I can't get it far enough under the front. Uh, it's actually pretty far under there. It's right by the strake uh, that's under there, which by the way, replacements you can buy at emfcaraudio.com. And uh, the jack not being able to go all the way under there, I've got to do it from the back. Uh, it's a very rigid monocoque. So when you lift at the rear, it's going to lift the front. So that's going to be my benefit here. So I'm going to get the back end lifted up, get to the wheel, and then we'll uh, continue. We're jacked up in the back, which also means we're jacked up in the front. Uh, we do have a few inches here. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to get it there. But now we're going to take the wheel off. This is a 17 millimeter. I'm obviously going to use an impact because I'm in my garage and I have access to these tools. 
uh, but you have to go buy hand tools or whatnot. You're in a parking lot, whatever. It is a 17 millimeter and it is 95 foot pounds. So you are probably gonna need a half inch uh, or at the very least you may need a breaker bar. So now with the wheel off, we've got three, three millimeter hex. Uh, why these are different from the rest of them, I don't know. But when we take these off, we may be able to take this, kind of move it, peel it, whatever, to reach up here. Because in this neighborhood is where that cable is going to be. Uh, when I originally got into mine the last time I was in here, it was not uh, pushed through the door and you could just grab it, pull it. Uh, I may leave it like that again since this might be more difficult on me now uh, since I put it the way that's supposed to be inside the door jam. Uh, but it should be in this area. So I'm going to take these out and hopefully that'll do it. If it doesn't, for you, uh, the rest of these bolts are 10 millimeter hex heads that are down there if you have to take the whole thing out. Uh, these up here go to the TPMS sensor, so do not take either of those out it will not do anything for you. Okay, so now after taking those three out, we can peel the carpet back. Uh, you don't have to pull the plastic out, which I actually started to do. Uh, but you don't have to pull that, but just the carpet. And that cable right there is the one that we've got to pull. Um, so I'm going to push the plastic piece right there in to get the release, and then we should be good. All right, so I gave the cable a little push. Uh, like I said, yours may be completely disconnected. It was really difficult in there. That's why I had the wire tie on it. I tied it on there, but I gave it a little push and there we go. And now with this open, we can plug into our trickle charger right there. Uh, that'll give us a sufficient charge where we can open the door, do everything we need to do. Now, before you can actually make any progress on charging this, I decided to take a digital multimeter, check inside this plug, and see how much voltage I actually had. It was 1.4 volts. Uh, it's not supposed to be 1.4. It should actually be closer to 13.2 or so or at least in the 12s being lithium. Uh, so the battery is asleep. There's a battery management system on this battery when it gets dangerously low, it shuts the battery off to protect itself. So now we've got to wake it up. Um, plugging the tender in here, you'll notice it does nothing. It uh, reads that 1.4 volts, it laughs at it and says, I'm doing nothing with this. So the next step, uh, I'm actually going to put all of this back together uh, because I still want it on the jack. Uh, but after I do that, we're going to take all of this apart, take the front part, I guess it'd be the rear part, this part of the frunk, we're going to remove and get to the battery down here. And I'm going to show you how to wake it up. A reminder on these wheels, like I said, they are 95 foot pounds of torque on those. Make sure you put it on how you're supposed to. Uh, if you're in a pinch, get them very tight until you can go and torque them, but they are 95 foot-pounds, which is also 129 newton meters for my UK fans. So now we got to take all this apart. Uh, we've got the nets, let's just pull off the hooks, pull those back. You know, get them knotted up a little bit. And take the mat to the bottom. And now we get to the really fun part. That just peels right off. It's 
install Velcro because that lightweight life. Uh, and now we've got some Phillips on most of these and the hex. I believe these are going to be four millimeters. So I'm going to get these loose. Uh, we've got to take this only. So you'll see where it overlapped. This front section is the only one we've got to take loose. We've got Phillips head down here on the side, on the side there as well. So I'll get these taken out and I'll be back. Okay, some notable things. All of these on top, they're plastic screws going into plastic inserts. It doesn't take a whole lot to get them out. It's coarse thread, they come out pretty quickly, pretty easily. You may have one that gets like the, uh, the base of it. You don't have to pull it all completely out, the screw completely out. If you have the base that's stuck in there, you can't really get it out. Just grab right here, give a little bump, it'll pop them out, you can grab it, pull the whole thing out. These down here are metal screws. You can't strip them, but you can strip the plastic insert that's on all those. So taking them out and putting them in, be aware, they don't need much, uh, and you can easily strip those out. You don't really want to do that. Uh, when we go to put them back in, again, plastic heads that those can strip out. It doesn't take much to get them in and out. You can do it by hand if you need to. But from here, we can just grab and pull. And the whole thing is out. Uh, if you want to deal with this gasket ahead of time, you can. Uh, but I just grab and pull. It's fine. And there's our battery. So now we got to wake it up. Now you see we've got 1.4 volts and that's no good. Uh, this is the positive side. This is the negative side. It should be pretty apparent as there's a ground wire and there's a fuse box. Now what you don't want to do is hit it with jumper cables, connect it up and say, hey, let's give it a go. That's no good. Uh, what we do want to do is I'm going to use this handy any little lithium jump box and I'm going to keep it on the positive since that's uh, the one that's most difficult to get to and I'm going to tap the negative on here uh, again ensuring that this is actually delivering power I have to hit a little button to turn mine on uh, but make sure that's delivering power we're going to tap it several times and we're going to tap it until it comes up and it should say 12 13 volts so uh, let's give that a shot now every time I'm tapping this, uh, it did get to the point where the window started to roll down and it locked because that's what it's supposed to do is lock whenever it sees power. Uh, but the window did finish rolling far way down, so that's a plus. We are not showing 12 volts yet though. So I did manage to get it to charge and here's our 12.46 uh, where it left off. Now, full disclosure, uh, using the uh, charge to tap like that should have woken it up. I'm not sure why it didn't. People have had success doing that, uh, but it did not. Uh, I pulled the plug from the BMS that that's from, left it disconnected for a little bit, plugged it back in. Now I did not try to jump it off uh, so to speak, again after that. But what I did do is try the other method that I didn't know until I got to digging, which was hold this reset button down on the tender for five seconds and it started charging. So you may not have to take all this apart or if you're in a parking lot and you don't have a tender, you don't have power, whatever, uh, you can try the other method first Hopefully that'll work for you. Uh, but if you do have the tender and you're in my situation, press that down for five seconds. You don't have to take any of that apart. Now, if you've got a lithium charger that will do more than uh, this tender, which is only like two or three amps, I could use that and get this charged faster. Uh, right now, uh, I've got to leave it on there till it'll even start. Uh, the ignition won't come on anything like that. So I'm gonna leave it on the trickle charger for some hours uh, before that will be available. Uh, you may be able to get it to start depending when it actually fell asleep. Uh, and after the battery is woken up, you may also be able to use jumper cables at that point because the battery is awake. Uh, but be very careful about that. So there you have it. That's how you get in the car with no power at all. That's how you get the battery to wake up. Because remember, it's not dead. 
it's just a sleep. And some fine talking points to recap. Make sure you don't strip out the screws, either the plastic insert or the plastic heads themselves. They don't need much torque. The wheels, 95 foot-pounds is what you're after on those. Make sure you do it in the uh, opposing star pattern there. Make sure they're good to go. Uh, it is an M3 that are these guys right here. Get those loose, pull it back, find the cable, give it a pull, this comes up. Jack it up from the rear if you can't do it from the front because you don't have clearance. Make sure you use the posted green sticker lift points. They should be there, or at least remnants of them there. And that should get it done. I'll get you in the car, and uh, you may not be able to drive off immediately, but at least you're back in shape. So I hope you found this video helpful. Hopefully you don't have to use it, but uh, maybe if you do in the future, you'll remember this, come back for some notes, get your car back going. Make sure you hit subscribe, give it a like if you found this helpful. Check out some of the other tech videos as well. And I'll see you in the next one that should be the one that I was supposed to be doing instead of this one.